Have you seen progress? You know, what do you see with the offensive line, and how does this unit need? What do they need to do to improve going forward with the uh, brutal schedules? Well, I mean, you look at the numbers for. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, we're doing a video. Oh, anyway. sorry. It's all right. Phil Mackey, Tom Pelissero here at the Metrodome following a Vikings 24-10 victory over the Lions in Week 3. They improved to 1-2 and two on the season. Certainly still a flawed football team. But what can they take out of this heading into the bye week, Tom? The biggest thing is they won the football game. It would have been catastrophic. You cannot underestimate what the impact would have been if they had come out and lost to the Lions. The Lions were up in this game. It was 7-0. The Vikings offense, once again, just looked like they absolutely couldn't get anything together. The special teams forces a big turnover. They get a short field. They go down and score against the blown coverage. From there, you saw the pieces start to come into place a little bit. That, that's the biggest positive that you can take out of it, getting Chris Cook and Cedric Griffin back. Huge for this defense to be able to go and beat up receivers at the line, to not have to rely on Lito Shepard and Asher Allen chasing the coverage. That's big. Adrian Peterson, a huge 80-yard run. That's the sort of play you, you could feel it. in this building and on the sideline. You could see the difference before and after that run. They needed that sort of a big play. You guys are human beings. That's what we always forget. Sometimes you need something to galvanize you, get some sort of positive momentum going. So much has been negative. The biggest thing today, they found a way to win a football game. And really, we're seeing here the first three weeks of the season the impact of Sidney Rice not being out there, stretching the field, not going up and making catches between two defenders. It's a different style of offense. It's almost what we talked about heading into last season where Favre would come in, Peterson would still be the focus, and Favre would just do what he has to do, and it flip-flopped to where Favre was running the show. Well, now it might be going back to where Peterson has to run the ball 20 times a game and go for 150 yards every once in a while. You look at the numbers, 30 rushes today, 183 yards. Favre only throws for 201 yards. His long completion of the day was 24 yards to Percy Harvin. This wasn't a vertical offense. They weren't taking a ton of shots deep. Detroit was playing two safeties deep, playing an umbrella coverage. They weren't going to let the Vikings burn them over the top. So what did they do? The Vikings repeatedly just chucked it down to the tight ends. The quick, they got Percy Harvin more involved, which I think was a really good step forward manufacturing his touches. I talked to a, a scout for another team before the game who said, I don't understand how they're not getting the ball in Percy's hands more. They did that, gave him a couple of end rounds today. That was a good step forward. But in terms of making things happen on the perimeter, how many times did Bernard Berry had run down the field today and it looked like his plan was just try to get knocked down and draw a flag? He's not going up. He's not fighting for the ball. He's not getting any sort of separation downfield. They still need to figure out what they're going to do with that perimeter group. But again, they did enough and they allow Adrian Peterson to carry him. And Shanko was limited with what looked like a hamstring injury right. at some point in the third quarter. Now the bye week coming up here, the Vikings have a brutal schedule on the other side of the bye week, but the bye week is used as sort of a self-reflection, analyze what you need to fix sort of a week. What do the Vikings need to do? What are they going to look at here heading into the bye week? Well, I asked Brad Childress about that, how much time are you guys going to spend on self-scouting, because this is the one time the coaches really get to take a step back. It's so I mean, early in the season, though. Right, the he problem. made the point that there's not really a body of work. There's three games, you kind of are what you are at this point. They're going to look at some of the goal line, short yardage, tendencies, see if there's anything there. But I think there are a bunch of things that they need to sort out, and they need to think about what they want to do going forward. Number one, Phil Lodehold needs to be able to step forward. And I'm not suggesting that you bench Phil Lodehold at right tackle. He's your best physical specimen at that position. He has shown promise in the past, but he's really hit a stumbling block here, Phil. He, the first three games of the season, has been the weak link on that offensive line. We saw it again today. Defense is no, you just speed rush them all day. Eventually somebody's going to get there. Leads to one of the interceptions today. Also led to the pressure that forced an incompletion on a key third down early on. That's stuff that can't happen in and out. So how do you give him? Do you, do you slant the line? Do you give him more help? Guys chipping out of the backfield, more tight end help. You can only do that so much or it limits your offense. I think that's one thing they have to look at. I still think that in the long term, they've got to look and see if their nickel linebacker situation is the best idea with E.J. Henderson and Chad Greenway out there. Again, we saw E.J. Henderson today slow to react to a player coming across his face. Tony Scheffler catches a touchdown. You just wonder, with Henderson's injury, they like him out there for a lot of snaps, but do you maybe involve Ben Lieber more? Because Ben Lieber, honestly, may be the best cover linebacker they have, and they're taking him off the field. Chad Greenway's been lights out. You can't take him off the field. So maybe you reduce E.J. Henderson's snaps. I think that's two big things, and I still think that the safety group has been unremarkable. Hussein Abdul had a couple of plays today. Medea Williams, every now and then you see a flash, but they also have Jamarcus Sanford. They have Tyrell Johnson. They know what those guys can do. 
does that situation continue to evolve? I think those are three big things. And also, the third down back. They put Toby Gerhardt out there today. He had a fumble. Last week, Peterson on third downs was awfully good. And he's a better pass blocker at this point than Gerhardt. What are they going to do with that going forward? It's worth noting Lieber with a big interception on the goal line today. And uh, and also, Hussein Abdullah really looks like he's solidified himself in that starting safety role. Tyrell Johnson inactive for the first time in his career today. On the other side of the bye week, the Vikings play at New York, they play Dallas at home, and then Green Bay and New England on the road. Let's say they split that and go 2-2, two and two, which might be an optimistic scenario because those are four very good teams. So they're 3-4 and four if we project forward. If they go 2-2 two and two and they're 3-4 and four heading into Week 9, is that a decent spot to be? I think so, all things considered. You start 0-2, getting to 3-4. and four. Now, obviously, they'd like to be 4-3, and three, and that would be a much better position. But you look at the way that their schedule sets up the second half of the season. They're out of the worst stretch. And you would think Sidney Rice will be coming back at that point. The offense will have had more time to gel. Maybe some things come together. The big X factor in all this is injuries. What's going to end up happening? But, yeah, as much as you don't want to say that 3-4, and four, if you're the Vikings, is optimistic, that's not a terrible spot to be in no. when you start off the way that they did this year. Not when you break it down. Now, we're going to get back to this Little League football game that's going on outside of this glass, and uh, we'll catch you next not time. Not annoying at all. He's Tom. I'm Phil.